Question 1 was, if there are two or more verbs in the predicator, then which verb makes the clause intransitive or transitive part? I mean, what is it that makes it transitive or copula linking or intransitive? So you see here, you have the election results could be unclear. It's always the lexical verb which gives information about whether it's copula or transitive or intransitive, not the um, not the helping verb. For example, John should have taken. The essential message is John take job. These helping verbs, they help you to see the whole thing in a different kind of manner. Similarly, Mary has been seen in the building. There are three words in the predicator, and in that predicator you have one lexical verb here. So it's the lexical verb. If there's more than one verb, then it's the lexical verb which shows whether it's intransitive or transitive or copula. If there's only one verb uh, in the predicator, then obviously it's that one which does it. We scroll down, now go to question two. Why is the finite verb in fact finite? So what this refers to is um, the actual the terminology, the name. So with regard to finite or non-finite, consider this uh, sentence here. After walking home each day, she relaxes in the sofa. And here, this is the finite verb, she relaxes. If you change the person or the number of or the tense, if this was to be they instead of she, then it would be after walking home each day, they relax. So you notice that this would change here. This would not be there. So, if you change for person number a tense, it's only the finite verb which changes, not the non-finite verbs. Here's a non-finite verb. So you noticed that didn't change. So, in other words, um, let's well let's have another another, another example here. Um, if you change the person, it becomes I. After walking home each day, I relax in the sofa. And if you change the tense, then you have to again change the ending so now it becomes relaxed. So the finite verb is limited to changes in person, number, and tense. In other words, it's finite, also ike u en link. Okay, so let's go on to another question. Another question. The head of the subject has to agree with the finite verb. Now, what does this mean? And why is it important in English? If there are and the answer to this is because if there are many words in the subject, then you have to identify the head. Once you've done that, then you have to identify the finite verb which will agree with it. So in this case, the mayor, as well as his brothers, is going to prison? Or is it are going to prison? And you might be thinking, well, it has to do with brothers. The brothers are going to prison. But this is the head here. It's the mayor, as well as his brothers. So then you have this as being the finite verb. And now, this time, it's the mayor and his brothers are going to jail. This, Then you have this form. How, if you look at this one here, a large percentage of the old popu older population is voting against her. Is it is or is it are? Which finite verb form are you going to use? In this case it's is. It's referring back to the percentage here. Imagine if this had said a larger percentage of the older citizens. If this was citizens then you might be thinking well this has to agree with with this word here but it doesn't is has to agree with the head of the subject. So that's why it's important to be able to identify both the finite verb and the head of the subject. Distinguish between an adverbial and an adverbial complement. If we call these A, B and C, then here, an adverbial complement is an adverbial that you must have. An adverbial is optional. It can be removed or relocated. So they put 
uh, sorry, this should be a they. They put is a predicator. Their coats is a direct object. Can you stop there? They put their coats. You notice you cannot stop there. You have to include an adverbial. And because you must include an adverbial, an adverbial tells you where, when, how or why. Because this adverbial is uh, compulsory, you, you cannot be without it. It becomes an adverbial complement. Similarly, look at B. The coats were in the bedroom. You can't stop it. The coats were. You must have in the bedroom. And because you must have in the bedroom, which tells you where, because you must have it, it's an adverbial complement. Meanwhile in C, they, subject, had, predicator, something, a big argument, you could conceivably stop there. They had a big argument. That's the main information. This time, in the bedroom, purely indicates where. This is an adverbial. It's not syntactically necessary for you to be able to complete what you're saying. Moving to number five now. Distinguish between a subject complement and a post modifier. Well, look at A here. The children were well. So this is the subject, and the head of the subject is children. This is the predicator here, and this is a subject complement. Now look at B. This time, all of this is a subject from the in the beginning to days. It's the children who had been alone for many days were well. This is the predicator, and this is the subject complement. Everything between the head of the subject and this finite verb, that's to say, that's this part, who had been alone for many days, this is the post modifier. It tells you more about the children. So the post modifier differs to a subject complement. A subject complement is always on the right hand side of the predicator. Whereas a post modifier is to the left hand side, uh, to the right hand side of the head of a subject, or the head even of a direct object. Um, and lastly, how is grammar studied? Well, grammar, you don't just look at any kind of sentence. In order to learn to analyze grammar, you have to look at declarative statements, not questions, not imperatives. They are often positive, they're not in the passive form, and they mostly, this is supposed to be fit, within the seven main patterns, because we're analysing sentences at a B level. If you were to be doing this as a research course, then you'd see that there are many, many more categories and subdivisions. But we do, this is an, an introductory grammar course at the B level. Okay, I hope that your answers were approximately similar to what I've been talking about in this tutorial.